Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, we will learn about application of Laplace transforms and we will solve an example. So, let us learn what are the uh, uh, steps that we have to follow. So the first step is that we got to transform the circuit from time domain to S domain or Laplace domain. The next step is to solve the circuit using the nodal analysis, mesh analysis, source transformation, superposition or any other circuit analysis techniques that we have learned. And finally, we have to take the inverse transform of the solution and thus obtain the solution in time domain. Now let's first of all see uh, how the circuit elements, resistors, inductors, capacitors behave uh, in time domain and uh, S domain or Laplace domain. First of all, uh, the resistor, we know that Vt is equal to it into R and similarly in the Laplace domain it will be Vs is equal to Is into R or R into Is. That means the resistance does not change whether it is in time domain or in Laplace domain. Or, and so we can see in the diagram that the resistance remains same. But we will see in case of inductor and capacitor there are changes. Okay, now let us see uh, the, the changes in uh, inductor from time domain to S domain. We know that in time domain the voltage across inductor is given by this formula Vt is equal to LDI dt. We have also learned in the previous chapter that uh, the Laplace property differentiation in time domain uh, makes it into SFS minus F. Uh, 0 minus as the uh, S domain of differential equation. So, we will apply this here and so this is becoming Vs in Laplace domain L and Di dt will be now SIS look at here SFS so it will be SIS in our case minus minus F0 minus minus I0 minus and from here if we open it then we get these two terms and so in in form of a circuit we can represent it like this Vs this is Vs is equal to SLIS so IS we have to multiply it by SL so SLIS and then we have to add a voltage source equal to Li0 so, and the sign negative sign at the top because of this minus sign. So this is uh, what happens to the inductor in time domain when it is converted into Laplace domain. There is another a possibility also from the same equation if we uh, just manipulate we bring this here then Vs Li naught and in terms of current now we get these two terms so this current is summation of two currents one is this and one is this that means we, we can represent it by a parallel path so Is is now look here Vs over Sl so Vs over Sl so that is in one branch and the other branch will have a current source of I naught divided by S, this current source. So these are the two representations of an inductor in S domain. Now which one to use, we learn through uh, experiments or as we gain more experience in this, it will become easier. Okay, now let's, so in S domain inductor can be represented in two ways as we discussed here. Okay, now let us uh, find about capacitor. We know the capacitor current is given by ICB by dt. 
and this is the circuit in time domain voltage and current now when we transform this into Laplace domain we use this formula that in time domain converted into Laplace domain so our IT will become IS and C and DVDT will be replaced by a formula like this that is S Vs because we are talking of voltage minus V0 uh, minus I and from here we can just open this so this is now current it has two currents two paths so we can represent it uh, further by writing it V over some um, admittance that is 1 over SC from here actually we are just manipulating so we are writing Vs is equal, divided by 1 over SC and this remains as it is so now we can represent it by a circuit like this that the Vs is same here Vs Vs divided by this 1 over SC will give us the current Is and plus another current which is represented by Cv0 and the direction is opposite because of this negative sign so this is uh, one representation and like inductor we'll have another representation if we multiply this by Isc it will be simplified in this form and from here we take Vs out so Vs will now be Is divided by Sc plus V0 divided by S so now these are two voltage terms that means the circuit is in series and so this is how it will be represented we will have the capacitor and this voltage source in series so these are again the two representation of capacitor and which one to use for our circuit simplification uh, we'll learn through experience okay now there's one uh, another possible conditions in the previous month we have considered the initial conditions but sometimes a question is given that there is a zero initial conditions so what will be the effect of this there is no change in the resistor but in case of an inductor this term will become zero because this is representing the current at time zero so this will become zero that means this will be eliminated so this circuit will become simply SL and similarly the capacitor circuit will also have this voltage source uh, uh, eliminated so the capacitor will have uh, this form 1 over SC so this is what we have been using previously uh, that means we have been ignoring the uh, zero initial conditions in chapter number 15 okay. now let's solve a problem it's example 16.1 solved in the book but we'll try to um, make it little simplified form uh, using our own technique nothing much really this is the circuit in time domain so we'll convert this into Laplace domain and I'm sure you'll recall that UT this voltage source UT in time domain will become 1 over S so in Laplace domain we write 1 over S we are assuming that there is uh, initial condition is zero so SL uh, uh, the inductor will become SL and since L is 1 here therefore it will be S and so this 1 Henry inductor will be simply S the voltage across this uh, inductor will be in Laplace domain so V naught S coming onto the capacitor 1 over SC is the capacitor without zero condition and here now C is 1 over 3 so it will become 3 over S so the capacitor becomes 3 over S so uh, and no change in the resistor so this is our circuit now in Laplace domain 
And now we'll use uh, the uh, mesh analysis technique. So we're assuming two currents, I1S and I2S in, in these two mesh. And writing the mesh equation, uh, KVL, if we start from one corner and go around this loop, so it will be minus 1s, minus coming first, so we will write minus 1s. And then these two terms are common to i1s, so we will write 1 plus 3 over s i1. And then this term is also shared by i2, and its direction is opposite of i1, so we will write minus uh, 3 by s i2. So I hope you know this is... Uh, the technique that we have learned earlier in the mesh analysis. So if you have forgotten, I recommend that you go back and watch my video on mesh analysis. Okay, so this is for the uh, first mesh. Now in the second mesh you can see, uh, sorry, this one has been further simplified actually. This has been further simplified in this form. So this is our equation number one. And now we come to mesh number two. Uh, since there is no voltage source, so it will be zero. And all these three terms are being shared by I2. So we'll write uh, I2 multiplied by all these three. So S plus five and plus three by five, uh, three by S multiplied by I2. And since this is also shared by I1, so and the I1 direction is opposite of I2, so we'll put a minus sign. So minus 3 by S I1. So now we have these two equations. Okay, so we uh, were here, equation number 2, and from this equation, we can get I1 is equal to, shown here, you know, you, you just bring I1 on the left and then find the value of I1. I'm sure you can do this. And now, we'll plug in the value of I1 into this equation, equation number 1. So plugging in I1 in equation number 1, you get this term. You just plug in the value of I1 from here into this. And then solving, I have done all these steps, but I will not go uh, to explain you, I am sure. You can follow this, you pause the video and see every step. So th this, this is the final point that uh, we come across and let's see. So we had this and from here we can find I2 to be 3 S cubed divided by plus S, 8 S square plus 18 S. Now we need to find the voltage Vs. So once we have known I2, we just need to multiply by S to get V2S, uh, V0S. So V0S is S into this I2, S into I2, simplified, we come across this. And now we need to go for partial fraction. So you can see from here, uh, 8s can be written as 2s plus 4 and then we can write 4 squared which will make 16. So 16 gone from 18. We are left with 2. We can write 2 as under root 2 square. Now this one is the whole square. s plus 4 whole square plus under root 2 whole square. Now since there is a the, the plus sign so we cannot further subdivide. So let's try to find uh, the equation which can take care of this. Now this is the equation that we have in the Laplace which is equal to E80 sin omega t. Now our equation matches to this almost s plus 4 square s plus a square plus this is omega square. The only thing we need is a omega at the top instead of 3 so we can manipulate this so we can bring 3 out and divide by under root 2 and multiply by under root 2. So now this perfectly matches with this. And now we are ready to go into the time domain by taking inverse Laplace. So taking inverse Laplace, V naught S will become V naught T. 3 by under root 2 
and this just following the formula e raised to the power minus 80 e raised to the power minus 40 sine under root 2t because sine omega t so omega is under root 2 uh, and uh, this is the answer omega under root 2 voltage for t greater than 0 so this is the final answer so i hope uh, you have learned something and you can follow this technique to solve other problems thank you